So one more piece with absolute value equations, and that's actually solving the equations. Um, the key principle here with equations is one rule, and that's if the absolute value of some number x is equal to some number a, well then I mentioned distance before, right? If I have x and I want to go out a units, well that could take me to positive a, right? I guess if x is zero, distance from zero, well a units in the negative direction is going to take me to negative a. Well, that gives me two different cases. And so we have to consider both. So if x is equal, absolute value of x is equal to a, then x is either equal to a just as is, or x is equal to negative a, and I have to solve both. I have to solve both. But before we get to that point, all our equation solving skills from before are valid. So if I look at this first example here, I'm still going to just do my thing, right? I'm going to subtract 2. I'm going to divide by negative 2. Still don't have to do anything fancy here. And now that I'm left with the absolute value, I'm going to apply uh, this rule that I just established. So this is going to give me two cases. Either the equation just stays exactly the way it is, or I take the opposite of the right-hand side, of the non-absolute value side. And I'm going to solve, and I'm going to get 0 over here, and I'm going to solve over here, and I'm going to get negative 4. The only catch with absolute value, the big catch with absolute value, is we have to check for what we call extraneous solutions. And these are solutions that wind up actually not working out based on our original equation. So I'm going to take my two results and I'm going to substitute them back into my original equation to make sure it works out. So if I substitute 0, oh, well, negative, sorry, 3 times 0 is 0, so this is 2 times the absolute value of 6. All right, well, negative 2, this is be negative 12 plus 2, which is negative 10, so that works out. I'm going to do the same thing with 4. So this is going to be negative 2 times, oh, sorry, this should be negative 4, huh? So either way, negative 2, so negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6, which is still going to give me whoops, negative 12 plus 2, which is negative 10, and that all works out. So it's one extra step that we're going to need to do with uh, absolute value to make sure that I'm actually only representing the solutions that are valid. So let's try this with my other one. Same idea, either I don't need to do any work ahead of time because I'm already just left with my absolute value on one side. So either the equation is going to stay as it is, just without the absolute value, or it's going to be the opposite of that, 2x plus 5. I'm going to solve, so I'm going to get, let's see, 3x equals negative 6, so x equals negative 2. And I'm going to get x, if I subtract negative 4. So I need to take both of these and test them. So let's do that check. If I check negative 2, it's going to give me absolute value of negative 1 on the left hand side, LHS. And on the right hand side, I'm going to get, let's see, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 minus 5 is, uh-oh, it's negative 1, that's no good. Let's see the right-hand side. If I take this right-hand side and I look at negative 4 plus 1, negative 3, which is 3, that's on the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, I'm going to get 8 minus 5, negative 2 times negative 4, minus 5. Is, I wrote that backwards. It should be 5 equals 3, and that matches up, so that's good. So I'm going to reject negative 2 as a solution, and my only solution is negative 4. And that's why we need to check. Sometimes our results actually don't fit in the domain 
of the problem. So that's equations. Nothing is going to change when we get to, did I give? I did not. Um, nothing is going to change here when we get to inequalities. We just have to keep one thing in mind when we solve inequalities, right? So remember that if the absolute value of A is less than or equal to B, this turns into a compound, what we would call an and inequality, where we have kind of this triple inequality. And if it's greater than, we have kind of the split, what we'd call maybe like an or inequality, because it's one or the other. And this again would be true whether I had the equal signs there or not. Let's try one just to see what happens. Try one of each. So maybe we'll do x plus 1 less than or equal to 4. I'll come up with one more. We'll do 1 just greater than 5. We'll make them easy just to kind of see what's going on with the inequalities. So my first step is to apply the property. I have a less than or equal to, so I'm going to refer to my less than or equal to, and I'm going to rewrite this as negative 4, less than or equal to, oh wait, I don't want to do that first. I'm sorry, let's back that up. Let's divide by 2 first and take care of all of that. I can't use this property until I've gotten rid of everything but the absolute value. So I should actually start by this. And now I can break it up. So now I can apply my property. Sometimes math teachers make mistakes too. So I'm just going to, I don't need the absolute value either. Here we go. One more step, right? We're just going to subtract on all sides. That's my fault. That was rough. So here's my solution set, negative 3, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1. If I wanted to express that in interval notation, I could use my brackets here. Same thing goes on the, for this right-hand example. Um, again, just trying to make it a little bit simpler without, so we can focus on the actual property at hand. I don't need to eliminate anything from my uh, left-hand side. I can jump right to the inequality. So this is actually going to be my second inequality, my second property here. So I'm going to have inside the absolute value less than negative 5 and inside the absolute value greater than 5. So that I could take this distance and go in either direction, walk in either direction. Simply going to subtract to get my two inequalities and I want to show these both as part of the solution set. So if I write this as an interval, I've got negative infinity to negative six in union with forward to infinity. So I want to always maybe start getting in the habit of using this interval notation because uh, it's not going to go away. So getting used to it now uh, will help us down the line. 